because I will tell you that an entrepreneur is like a shark. They only die if they stop swimming. Okay. And I don't call my failures failures. I call them seminars because they're only a failure if you don't get back up or you don't get the lesson, right? What's up, everybody? My name is Mike Shogren here with my co-host, Emmanuel Pani. We're part of a group of specialized real estate investors you've probably never heard of. We didn't start with deep pockets or wealthy families, and we don't rely on 401ks, mutual funds, or traditional real estate investing. In fact, many of us don't even own the properties that fund our freedom. If you ask the money experts out there, they'd say what we do is impossible, yet it's happening every single day. It's happening through a new niche called short-term rentals. We are Short-Term Rental Nation, and these are our secrets. What's going on, STR Nation? Welcome back to another episode of the Short Term Rental Secrets Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Shogren, here with my main man and brother from another, Mr. Emmanuel Pani. What's up, E? My brother, so good to see you. Um, happy Thursday. I am glad you're back in Florida, as I can tell from that wall. I know the walls of your house and that wall does not belong. It looks like the wall of a castle or something. We're uh, in the, so. uh, the Harry Potter room here. So uh, there you go. You see, it did everywhere. look like the wall for a castle. I'm like, dude, that looks super castly back there. Um, but yeah, man, life is good. Similar situations. You know, it's before the market is what the market is. Uh, operations and rates are, are continuing to go uh, really, really well. Um, I posted something on my Instagram the other day for those of you that are friends with me on Instagram. But I just got a booking for a one-bedroom apartment for end of March for 90 days and our in pocket is about 15,500 for the three months. And yeah. the last time I rented that apartment as a long-term rental, I made $17,400 for the entire year. So we're literally making 90% of the money that we would normally make in a year in three months. So if we have any listeners that have a long-term rental that they've been thinking about switching to short-term rental, and you're like, well, the long-term rental rates are going higher and you're doing well. And I'm not saying that that's not true, but you, especially if you have never tried it, you don't know how much better you could do on, on the vacation rental side. So it's just like a reminder of ah, why we do what we do, you know? hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. And a quick announcement, just stay tuned. We got a big announcement this week for something that I've been working on for a while. I can't announce it yet, but I promise you, I believe by Thursday after this episode comes out, we've got some really good stuff uh, going on for June. I'll just leave it at that. But keep an eye out. We'll be sending out some emails on all that good stuff. Um, but I am super excited for today's guest. I want to get right into it. This is somebody that I have looked up to for a very long time. Uh, this is the first time that we've actually connected uh, personally. And, um, you know, he's got an unbelievable bio. I could read through the whole thing, but I'd rather have him tell his whole story. But you know, this is somebody that's built up. He's owned thousands of properties all over the place. He's huge in the multifamily space. He's built multiple businesses. He's built stuff up. He's lost it all. He's rebuilt it. And um, he's just an amazing human. Like, I love his attitude. I love his positivity. He's just, whether he knows it or not, he's been a mentor of mine for years now. And he's been a, a huge positive influence on me. Um, mm -hmm. So without further ado, we've got Mr. Rod Khalif with us today. Rod, how you doing, man? Wow. You made my day, brother. Thank you for those beautiful words. I mean, that really means a lot. Thank, thank you so much for that incredible introduction. Actually, um, yeah, I, I'm awesome. I'm glad to be here, and I'm I'm going to do everything I can to live up to to that incredible intro. So, well, let's have some fun today, guys. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I would so define you as one of the OGs of of American real estate multifamily investing. I don't know if there is like an OG group. But I would feel like you would be on there, right? If there was one. Yeah, that's kind of you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you I very much. I almost posted it on the thing. I'm like, the real OG is, is coming okay. too. I yeah, actually do have an OG group. I have a mastermind. It's called the Multifamily Boardroom. There's about 14 billion in assets in there. And it's, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's pretty humbling. You know, you, you want to be around people that think what you think is hard is easy. You know, which is why anybody listening to the show is 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 watching you guys because they they think what's hard is you can show them how easy it is, and I formed this mastermind for that very reason. But uh, yeah, thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Absolutely, absolutely. So for the few listeners out there who don't know who you are, why don't you give us like your backstory on sure? You know, Rod Khalif. 
Okay. It's painful. All right. Well, so um, I'm going to go way back because it adds, it adds some, some, some color to what I'm going to say next. So I immigrated this country when I was six years old uh, with my brother, Albert, my mother's Vancha. I was born in the Netherlands in Holland, you know, wooden shoes, windmills. And um, we ended up in Denver, Colorado, and we really didn't have much when we got there. We struggled. I remember we ate expired food. We went to an expired food store. We went, uh, had drank powdered milk with our cereal in the, in the morning, which I promise you sounds better than it is. Uh, and, uh, I wore clothes from the Goodwill and the Salvation Army all the way through junior high school till, uh, I lied about my age at Burger King when I was 14 and I got a job at Burger King so I could buy my own clothes and then hopefully ultimately buy a car, which every kid that age wants. And, you know, and I'm sure you've got listeners that have it harder than I did uh, and maybe have it harder now or had it harder in the past. But see, I, I knew I wanted more. And luckily, my mom had an incredible work ethic. She was a tough cookie and she babysat kids so we'd have enough money to eat. And she was an, uh, she was an entrepreneur with that money that she made babysitting. She invested in the stock market successfully and she also invested in real estate. Well, her first real estate purchase was the house directly across the street from us when I was about 14 for about 30 grand. Now, to give you an idea of how old I am, that they sold that house for about 400 grand a few years ago. Okay, so it gives you an idea how old I am. Anyway, so she bought it for 30 grand, but but a couple of years later, she told me she'd made $20,000 in her sleep that had gone up in value 20,000. I'm like, what? You made 20 grand, you didn't do anything? I'm like, screw college, I'm getting into real estate, mom. So I got my real estate broker's license right when I got turned 18. You know, back then you could actually be a broker, not just an agent through education. They got smart now, you know, to be a broker, you have to have some experience. But but I was a broker and I was going to be rich selling real estate. Well, my first year in real estate, I made about eight, maybe 10 grand. My second year, maybe 10 to 12 grand. But my third year, I made over $100,000. So what happened between year two and year three that caused me to 10x my income? Well, what happened was I met a guy, I was actually dating his daughter, that taught me about the importance of mindset and psychology. How truly 80 to 90% of your success in anything is just that, your mindset and psychology. Only 10 to 20% is the mechanical information, the vehicle, as it were. You know, uh, it's it's you know, it's it's your ability to to push through fear. It's a bit your ability to push through any limiting beliefs that you have. It's you know, your ability to get out of comfort. You know, the comfort zone's a warm place, but we all know nothing freaking grows there, right? So you've got to be able to push through that. And he, you know, he taught me that. And so, you know, fast forward to today, like you said, Michael, I've I've owned a couple thousand houses that I've rented long term. I've owned thousands of apartment units. Um, in 2006, my net worth went up $17 million while I slept. And you're like, wow. And I was like, wow. And I got a head so freaking big, I could barely fit it through a door. I thought I was a real estate god. And, you know, if you want to do the math on that, it's $8,300 an hour for the year. Okay. And so, you know, of course, I I mean, on a 40 hour work week, uh, full disclosure, but, but, but of course, I got a head so big, I could, you know, I, I was unsufferable. And you know, when that happens, God of the universe will give you a nice little smack. Well, that was 2008. I lost that and a whole lot more. I lost 50 million bucks in 2008. And I thought I was set for life. And so, you know, what I'm known for, you know, I host a podcast and it's, uh, I'm blessed to say it's the largest commercial real estate podcast in the world. Now we've broken 12 million downloads. And, 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 and the reason I think it's been so successful is I talk about mindset and psychology because, you know, I talk about the mindset it took to have 50 million to lose in the first place. And then of course the mindset as importantly, maybe more important to recover from that. I mean, there were people that killed themselves both in this last crash and in, of course, the the great depression for losing less comparatively. And, and, you know, and, and it was painful. So, you know, if you'd like guys, I'm happy to drill down on some of these mindset components that, um, that really made that happen. And, and, and really, you know, honestly, why some of my, my students are so freaking successful because it is almost all mindset, you know, you just, and you guys know this, you just have to take action, right? Yeah. I love Rod. I would love before we go anywhere, I would love also because <clears throat> very selfishly i've never met anybody that lost 50 million dollars neither have i right, right? <laughs> what if you do, if what you do that? please have them call me so i can no, feel better me. about myself okay? i want you to tell me because i mean you seem like a pretty happy guy now so what was that moment right because i i think like the 50 million it's it's unique to you and your experience where you were in your journey but I feel like the same pain can happen in a much smaller oh. scale, but it's the same thing, right? Like losing your job or yeah, like losing, 10, yeah. 
you know, if you have 20,000, losing 20,000. So Mm -hmm. what did you feel like? What was that conversation that you had? Because being an entrepreneur, I'm sure that you were were somewhat hard on yourself, you know? Yeah. So walk us through that. Yeah, Yeah. sure, sure. Well, listen, I'm glad you brought up entrepreneur because I will tell you that an entrepreneur is like a shark. They only die if they stop swimming, okay? And I don't call my failures failures. I call them seminars because they're only a failure if you don't get back up or you don't get the lesson, right? And so I call them seminars. And now, just so you know, I built 27 businesses. I counted them and I, I couldn't believe it was that many. 27 businesses in my, you know, I'm I'm in 44 years since I turned 18. Uh, that's how long I've been in the business world. And several of those businesses have been worth tens of millions of dollars, but most have been spectacular flaming seminars, okay? And, you know, we fail our way to success, guys. And and I'll tell you, um, you know, a lot of people, you get a lot of people that are in analysis paralysis and they fear failure. I'm going to tell you, I fear regret a whole lot more than failure. Um, there was this nurse in Australia named Bronnie Ware, a hospice nurse. And so she took care of patients when they were about to die. And she asked him a question. And, you know, the question was, do you have any regrets? And she wrote a book about it. It's called The Five Regrets of Dying. You know what the number one regret was? Not living the life I could have lived, living someone else's life, not doing what I know I'm capable of. Guys, I can't think of anything worse than that. But back to your question. What I did, well, of course it sucked. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, it was not fun, okay? I mean, you know, I I thought 80 million baby boomers getting old and getting cold that Florida was recession proof. (laughs) You know, in fact, my portfolio, I was only at a 30% loan to value. At the end of the crash, that value had come down so much I was upside down. That's how much it crashed here. But but anyway, so so wow. luckily I was around people that were thriving, and that's one of the pieces of this. You need a powerful peer group. You need to be around people that that aren't afraid of what you want. That 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 will push you. That will validate you. That will encourage you. That's one of the reasons my coaching program is so successful. I've I've been teaching four years. My students now own somewhere around fifty five thousand units, which I'm super freaking proud of. I'm probably most proud of, other than my kids. And so, you know, and and so. You need that environment. And most of those units were done between warriors. I call them my warriors, but it was done between students. And so you need to, you listening need to be in an environment like through this podcast. I'm sure you guys talk at meetups and there's meetups that meet on this topic. Get around people that aren't afraid of your success. You know, there's a lot of people out there that through their fear, through their jealousy, through their fear of losing you, through their fear of feeling inadequate around you will hold you back. And so, you know, and sometimes it's family. So I would tell you, you know, love your family, but choose your peers. But but back to back to your question again, what I had to do, and it ties into mindset and, and, and motivation and goals, is, is I had to reassociate with what I wanted and why I wanted it, okay? It's so easy mm-hmm. when something negative happens to you to, uh, well, a lot of bad things that can happen. One, if you make your vehicle your identity, if your business is your identity and your, and your business fails, then you're a failure. So you never identify with your business. It's always a vehicle. Remember that, guys, okay? Also remember that it's never what happens to you. It's the meaning you place on it. And you choose the meaning you put on something. Two people can have the same, from outside appearances, horrific experience, and one person can come out stronger because they placed a positive meaning on it, and the other one can be destroyed. So my meaning for what happened to me, losing $50 million, is if it hadn't happened, I wouldn't have met my wife. And if you saw my wife... She's rock star, freaking supermodel, beautiful, and actually more beautiful on the inside. And I'd give it all up again for her. So that's the meaning I placed on. So meaning is very important as well. But the big thing I did was I reassociated with what I wanted and why I wanted it. Okay. And so, you know, if you'll humor me, I'll take, uh, you know, if you come to one of my boot camps, by the way, I know you're airing this uh, soon. And I've got a virtual boot camp coming up two days, March 12th and 13th. It's online. Um, I don't sell anything at there. It's 16 to 18 hours of training, nothing being sold. And if if you DM me, or actually, I'll just give you the code now. If you use the code Rod Friend, you can come for 97 bucks. Okay. So uh, it's it's if you text Rod to seven two three four five, we'll send you the link. It's multifamilyvirtualbootcamp.com. But text Rod 
to 72345. And then remember the code Rod Kent friend, you can come for 97 bucks. And again, I don't sell anything there. It's kind of a duh. If you're interested in multifamily, if you're not, then you know, no, no big deal. But the reason I bring that up is the first thing we do is a goal setting workshop. Okay. The first hour and a half or first hour, 15 minutes is getting you clearly freaking aligned on what you want. How do you get anything if you don't know what it is, right? With clarity, measurable, the whole thing. So that's the first thing we do at my boot camps. And so, um, you know, that's what I did. Now, if you'd like, I can describe that process in about five minutes to your listeners if they're not interested in multifamily because it applies to life. It certainly applies to short-term rentals as well. You got to know what it is you want. You've got to set some goals for yourself. And so if you'd like, I can describe that process. You let me know. A hundred percent. And I, we have a mastermind as well. And it's the same thing on the application. The first thing we ask is, what is your goal? Like, what are you trying to achieve? And most people, when we have that conversation, they know everything that they don't want, but they haven't really dialed in what they actually want. That's, that's exactly right. People, you know, and that's that I will tell you, I, I didn't finish actually the conversation. I just realized you, you reminded me of something that um, people connect through negativity. And, and, and they, they're so focused on what they don't want. It would have been very easy for me to stay focused on all that loss. I use it as an example, but I don't live there. You know, remember pain is going to happen. Suffering is optional, right? Okay. And if you relive the negativity, you're suffering. And so, um, you know, I'll, I'll give you another example of this. If you're listening to Michael and Emmanuel here, you're a leader. I know you're a leader. Okay. And, as a leader, it is so critical that you maintain your focus and you maintain your positive energy. You've got to make sure you keep the cr negative crap out. Don't get me started on the fake news. Don't stay off the news. You know, I mean, of course, today's a big day with with freaking Russia attacking Ukraine. So who knows how, how that's going to impact stuff. So obviously you can't avoid that. But the point is, you've got to stand guard at the door to your mind and focus on what it is you want, not what you don't want. And, and um, bring in the good stuff. You know, my podcast, I do these clips called Own Your Power. They're motivational. I'll juice you if you give me five minutes a week. There's hundreds of them there. They're incredibly powerful. And, and you know, even if you're not interested in multifamily, you'll get value out of them. And my podcast is called Lifetime Cashflow. I hope you check it out. But the point is, as a leader, people are watching you. You've got to stay focused and, 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 and live that leadership life by being positive and focused on what you want, not what you don't want. I'll give you another example. If you come up to me and say, Rod, how you doing? And I say, oh my God, I am freaking fantastic. Life is amazing. It's incredible. You'll take a few steps back and say, okay, Rod's off his freaking mitts. But if you came up to me and said, Rod, how you doing? I said, oh, dude, my back is freaking killing me. You know, I just had this, this, and this happen. You'll put your arm around me and say, I feel you, brother. We connect through freaking pain. So be a, pay attention to that, okay? But anyway, um, let me know if you want me to describe that goal setting process. I think it's powerful, and I think you're you're yeah, hundred percent. Okay, 100%. all right. So, so here's what I want you to do, guys. And again, I do this. By the way, if you don't want to come to my boot camp, I did it on my Rod Cleef official Facebook page. If you DM me on any social channel and just say send me the goal setting link, I'll send it to you. And I did it with music; it's professionally done. I give you a guide to download that you can do it with, and it's great to have your kids do it. if they're 12 years or older. Have them do it. Have your spouse do it. But but let me describe it for you, okay? So pick an hour when you have a lot of energy and and you're not going to be interrupted. Make sure you're well hydrated. And sit down and write down everything you could ever possibly want in life, okay? Now, this is not just the freaking three things for New Year's resolutions that are forgotten by February. This is everything, okay? Write down all the stuff, the houses, the cars, the boats, the jet skis, the planes, you know, the jewelry, the clothing, um, and, and there's nothing wrong with stuff. And take the lid off your brain. Imagine if you write it down, you're going to get it, which is not outside the realm of reality, okay? Because there's truly nothing you can't do, be, or have. Don't, don't get me started on that. Elon Musk, $3 billion startups, okay? Don't tell me what you can't do because there's nothing you can't do, okay? So, um, write down everything you want. Write down how much cash flow you want from your short-term rentals in three years, how much cash flow you want in 10 years. Write down how much cash you want in the bank in your, you know, case the shit hit the fan fund in three years and in 10 years. You know, write all that stuff down. Also, write down um, and take the lid off your brain. Again, if the, if you can imagine it, you can have it, jet, a, a private yacht, a, a private island, whatever it is. Don't limit yourself. And 
Um, then once you can't think of another thing in the stuff realm, think about all the things you want to do in your lifetime, the places you want to go, write that down. You know, where do you want a second home, a third home, a ranch, a place on a lake, a place on the ocean, all that stuff. Um, uh, you know, maybe you want to climb every mountain over 14,000 feet. I've got a friend doing that. In fact, I think he's done. Um, or, or jump out of a perfectly good airplane. I did that a few years ago. I'll never freaking do it again, but it's off the list. Okay. So all the bucket list items too. Um, also write down everything you want to learn in this lifetime. You want to learn a foreign language. You want to, you know, uh, learn, of course, if it's multifamily, for God's sakes, come see me. But um, you guys are in the right place, obviously, for short-term rentals. These guys are rock stars. So, so you know, whatever you want to learn, write that down. And lastly, write down who you want to help. You know, so this, and guys, people spend more time planning a freaking birthday party than they do designing their lives. You are designing your life through this process. That's how powerful it is. So write down who you want to help because here's why. We'll do more for others than we'll ever do for ourselves. And this is the fuel to get you to take action, actually do something. So write down who you want to help. Like I bought my parents a house here in Florida when my dad was alive. You know, bought them a car, took them on cruises. Who do you want to do something for? Write that down. Okay. Once you can't think, and by the way, if you're analytical, don't stop and analyze the answers. Just keep writing. Don't let the pen leave the paper, okay? And, and don't think you can do this in your head. If you're in your head, you're dead, okay? It's got to be on paper. But see, just writing these goals down triggers something in your brain called your reticular activating system, okay? That's a subconscious filter. You're not aware of it consciously that points you in the direction your brain thinks you're interested in. And the greatest example is when you first buy a car. You never really notice them, and then you see them everywhere, right? They, were they there before? Of course they were. And that's your reticular activating system. The same thing applies to your goals, you know, and, and you want to associate with your goals regularly. Like, like Grant Cardone, I think, says, write them down the morning and in the evening. I don't do it quite that much, but you, you should definitely associate with them regularly. Keep them in your reticular activating system. Now, once you can't think of another thing, there's just a couple more steps. I want you to write down how many years you think it's going to take you to achieve each goal. Just put a one, a three, a five, even a 10 or a 20, recognizing that as human beings, we will overestimate what we can do in a year and massively underestimate what we can do in 5, 10, 20 years. I'll give you an example of this. When I was 18, and please know, I'm going to give you some personal examples in this. I'm not bragging. In fact, you know, most of this stuff doesn't even interest me anymore, but I'm hoping to inspire you. So just replace my examples with whatever does interest you. Okay. So, um, uh, 20 years or when I was 18, I knew I always wanted to live on the beach and there's no beach in Denver. Right. So I, I would visualize the, the beach and the palm trees and the surf and the sand. And 20 years later, I built this incredible $8 million mansion on the beach. I mean, giant waterfall from a second floor balcony into the pool. The house was called a Gulf to Bay. I owned the beach on one side and it was a slice through an Island. And I had my boat lifts on the backside, just spectacular, but it was unthinkable when I was 18. And that's the point that I'm making. Don't limit yourself. Okay. Cause you, you are, you're on, trust me, you're, it's unbelievable what you're capable of when you set your mind to it. All right. So you've got a time limit on each goal and don't overthink that either. Just guess. Now I want you to pick your number one goal. I mean, that goal, when you get it, you're like, oh, my God, you know, you've arrived when you achieve that goal. Put it on a separate sheet of paper. Then pick your top three one-year goals. Put those on a separate sheet of paper. You've got four goals with some room in between them. And I will tell you, at this point, you're ahead of 99.9% .9 of the people on the planet that, like I said, do a New Year's resolution. And it's historically proven that, statistically proven that they're forgotten by February 15th. But you're already way ahead. But there's, there's one more step that's critical. You need to write down under each one of those goals why it is an absolute freaking must to achieve, okay? And I mean, you want to use emotionally charged words like incredible and beautiful and amazing because words are so powerful. So you might say, so I can show my kids what incredible success looks like. So I can show my wife what it means to live a life of amazing abundance. So we can have unbelievable freedom to do whatever we want, whenever we want, wherever we want, bring whoever we want. So whatever's going to juice you, write that down. And put something under each one of those goals, why it has to happen. But then I want you to put some pain in there if it doesn't happen and make it freaking hurt so I don't feel like a failure, so I don't fail my kids, so I don't fail my husband or wife, so you know I don't live a life of regret. And I told you that Bronnie Ware story. I did say that already, right? I've been interviewed five times today. Yeah, okay, so yeah. So you don't want to live that that life, okay? So, so um. Um, put that put that pain in there. And the last thing, 
is go out and get freaking pictures of your goals. Go online on Google, put in what you think might resonate with your goals. And when you see a picture and it kind of, it moves you, even if it's not perfect, as you're like, mm, man, that feels good. Download it, have it blown up, put it all around you. Let me give you some public examples of this. And you want to make declarations as well. Jim Carrey, the actor, the comedian, when he was flat broke, wrote himself a check for $10 million. And he used to go by the Hollywood sign and he would look at it and visualize cashing it. That's how much he made for Dumb and Dumber. I'll give you a more recent example. Demi Lovato, the singer, when she was unknown about 11 or 12 years ago, posted on social media, one day I'm going to sing the national anthem in the Super Bowl. I think it was like the three ago. Go see who sang it. Okay. I'll give you some personal examples for me. Back when I was 18, I got my real estate license, like I said, and I figured I had to have a four-door car to show people houses, right? So I got this bone friggin' ugly Ford Granada, bench seat in the front, just a real piece of crap. And But I worked the guy I worked for that taught me about mindset, the first one, um, had two Corvettes, and he let me drive one. And I drove it because I was dating his daughter, so he let me drive. I'm like, oh, my God, this is freaking incredible. So this is before the internet. I got a picture out of a magazine of a Corvette. I put it on the visor of that bone ugly Granada. Every time I sat in there, it was right in front of me. Within a year or two, I had a Corvette. A couple more examples. I'm the guy that always wanted, uh, I actually, let me back up. This is back when the TV show was uh, Magnum PI was out. Uh, actor's name was um, Tom Selleck before you guys were born. But anyway, he was a detective in Hawaii. And it's the first time I saw an exotic car, okay? It was a Ferrari 308. And I'm like, holy shit, that's incredible. So I got a picture of that actual car, put on the visor of my Corvette. Within a year or two, I had a Maserati look just like it. And, and growing up, I always wanted a Lamborghini. Okay. And, you know, I had the Lamborghini Countach with Mike, which Mike Tyson bought for him and his wife matching ones. I think they were married a week. And, but anyway, I always had these pictures of Lamborghinis around me. And what's interesting is my son collected models of exotic cars. When he was nine years old, he had about 40, you know, the McLarens, the Porsches, the Ferraris, and he had a Lamborghini, he had a model of the exact same color and style that I ended up getting, which is actually in my video studio here. But let me show you something. You guys put these on YouTube too? Well, you guys, you go on live video anyway. This is my planner, okay? It's on today, February 24th. In the back of this thing, I've got pictures that have been in here for 22 years now. Now, my kids are 30 and 26. These are my gratitude pictures. Start with gratitude, guys. I know I'm going to get a little foofy on you here, but this is how I had 50 million to lose. So I hope you listen up. Starts with gratitude. That's how you manifest everything you want in life. Okay, so I got my gratitude pictures. You know, then I've got pictures of things that I wanted. This top picture looks just like the house I built on the beach before I did. I had 10 foot high glass like that. It was 80 foot long. Looked just like that. I had travertine floors like that. This bottom picture, I told you about that house I built on the beach, that that one right there. Well, I lost that and all the craziness, okay? And um, and so now I live in a compound. I've got six buildings. I've got a big main house, a beautiful guest house on the water, an exercise facility that's off the chain. I've got a media building with a video studio that I built when I had to go virtual because of COVID. And, and, and what's funny is because God's got a sense of humor, my old place literally is right across the bay from where I live now. It's right out in my backyard. But look at this bottom pictures. You see those white walls in those two pictures? Those are actually two different balconies. See the white walls? This is my backyard now. See the white wall? Is that freaking crazy? I'd noticed that a while back. Then I've got, you know, pictures of stupid shit like watches. I got a few hundred thousand dollars worth of watches, you know, that I thought was important at one time. There's the Lamborghini before I ever got it. Rolls Royce, got a Bentley in the garage. Now, all this stuff that I got because I had pictures. So go get pictures. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm done, guys. I'll drop the what, mic. What did that? I love that, right? And, and I love it because I think Mike and I talk about this a lot. And I think one of the things that we talk about a lot is it doesn't matter the books. It doesn't matter the podcast. It doesn't matter the trainings you do until your operating system gets upgraded to really like embody the new learning. Nothing happens, right? And so the reason I'm saying that is because I want to bring you there because I think it's very important because I think when you're kind of juiced up and energized, and if you don't have the peer group around you that is also juiced up and energized, mm -hmm. what do you tell your warriors, right? That's yeah. what you call them, your warriors. Great question. Yeah. Great question. So what do you tell your warriors is like when you go home and life comes back at you because it takes you what it takes you to become who you want to be. So you have to give up who you are to become who you want to be. And you have to lend yourself a share amount of faith and belief in that, in that process, right? In that walk from who you are now to who you want to be. What do you Great tell question. people? Like, how do Great you question. stay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I interrupted brother. I no, have go a for bad, it. bad habit. Yeah, of doing yeah. that. I you knew what I was asking. I get, I get excited and I just want to yeah, say yeah, it. Go for it. Anyway, go. 
so 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 you have to have what Napoleon Hill calls a burning desire in his book, Think and Grow Rich. And by the way, if you've not read that book, just go freaking get it. It's a book you should actually read a couple times a year. But he calls it a burning desire. And that's what the goals are for. You need the goals. OK, it's never about the goals. Just know that. But you have to have them because that's what drives you. You know, they say the mm -hmm. happiest days of a boat owner's life are the day they buy the boat and the day they sell the boat. It's never about the goals. I'll tell you, I'll give you an example of this in a minute. That's a very gripping example for me personally. It's an epiphany moment. But here's the thing. When you've got a dream, it's a fragile thread. And that's why it's so critical for you to be around people that are going to, that aren't going to be afraid of that dream, jealous of that dream, you know, uh, or try to hold you back out of their fear of losing you. And sometimes it's family. And I'm going to tell you, love your family, but choose your peers, choose who you allow to influence you and choose who you share that dream with until it's not a fragile thread anymore, until it becomes solid. And there's no way anybody's going to derail you. So, uh, you know, that that's the one thing I want to say about that. But let me share a quick story because it relates to goals. OK, so I built that house on the beach. OK, and I mean, this place was freaking spectacular. Uh, giant waterfall, second floor balcony of the pool. I had a spiral staircase up through the middle um, uh, of the whole house. I had, you know, wine cellar, elevator um, on the second floor. I had aquarium built around the staircase that cost me almost 200 grand. So it gives you an idea of the house. I worked for this thing for 20 freaking years, okay? Two months after I moved in, okay? I'm floating in the pool at night. Pool's changing colors, got fiber optic lighting. Pool was in magazines. It was spectacular. I had trees that I, you know, tens of thousands of dollars that I bought that bent out over the pool. Really cool. But I'm floating in the pool. So again, I'm, I'm worked for this thing for 20 years. Two months after I moved in, my family's inside sleeping. And I look up at this testament to my ego. It's really what it was. It was to prove the world I was good enough. You know, in high school, I'm sorry, in, in, when I immigrated, I didn't speak English. I got thrown into school, found out what bullies were for the first time. And, you know, and then I had, you know, what we all have, childhood experiences. You know, I had one where I was in, thought I was in love with this little girl when I was in sixth grade and she humiliated me in front of other kids. And so I came up with this limiting belief that I wasn't good enough. And so, you know, like I said, I built this testament to my ego, which is really what it was to prove the world I was good enough. And I'm looking up at this thing again, two months after I moved in to something I worked for for 20 years and I got depressed. And I don't mean just a little depressed. I mean, I got really depressed. I'm like, what the fuck? I, how could I be depressed? I've just achieved success like times a thousand. I've got the house. I've got the beautiful family. I've got the Maserati, the Mercedes, all the stuff. How could I be depressed? That's what I'm going to share with your listeners because I know you've got listeners that are young and they got blood dripping from their teeth and they want this so freaking bad. And I want to give you an important message. So listen up if that's you. See, there were several things happening. One is you should never achieve a big goal without having your other goals lined up behind us. Like the good book says, without a vision, the people perish. You need a vision for the future. And I didn't know what I was going to do next. Second thing is it's never about the goals. Happiness comes from progress and growth. So as you're doing this short-term rental business, you want to acknowledge any progress you make. Even if you just listen to uh, you know, one of the podcast episodes from these fine guys or whatever, pat yourself on the back on a weekly basis and say, good job, consciously. Because you're going to have setbacks, you're going to have delays, you're going to have your butt kicked. But if you're consciously celebrating your progress, you'll be happy regardless of all of that. Now, but so that's the second. But the third big thing was I was totally focused on myself. You know, rod, 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 show the world I matter, show the world I'm good enough. And so I went out and bought some books, okay, to, to get back. I'm going to get back. You know, I'm not going to go lay on a couch and bemoan my existence to a therapist, even though I believe in therapy now. But the point is I didn't back then. <laughs> So I went out and bought some books. One of them was Tony Robbins' book. And I got about halfway through it, one of his books. He's got tons of them. But one of them, Unleash the Power, I think is what it was. Mm. And I'm like, holy shit, this guy, this is incredible. This is good stuff. So I went and saw him live, which I highly recommend, by the way. I've spent 20 years following him around the planet. Um, mm -hmm. Highly recommend to see him while he's still speaking. But, but found out that he feeds families for the holidays. And I'm like, you know, what a concept, do something for someone else. I mean, I had embarrassed to say I had to be 40 to get that memo, but, and I, I, um, I went back home and I called my brother. I was going to go see him for Thanksgiving in Denver, fly back to Denver. And I said, Hey, listen, bro, let's, let's feed five families. So he called his church, found out who really needed some help and guys, listen up, please don't lose me on this. Cause probably the most important message I'm going to give you today. Okay. So he found these five families. Um, we went and bought food for the families. We bought frozen turkeys, toys for the kids, all this stuff. It was a lot of fun, but the third family changed my life. 
So I go up to this place and this was a row house in, in, in an old part of Denver, hundred year old property where you walk. And it was a, like a crap. It wasn't even a one bedroom, a shitty one bedroom. You walk into the living room, you walk through the bedroom to get to the kitchen. It's not even a one bedroom. This woman lived there with five kids. She comes out on this porch. She sees all the stuff on the porch. She starts crying. Her kids come out. Two of the older ones started crying. I started crying and I was freaking hooked. And I'm, I'm blessed to say in the last now 21 years, we've fed over 110,000 children here in Sarasota and Bradenton, Florida. We've done tens of thousands of backpacks filled with school supplies for local kids. To, to, so, you know, it's astounding to me. We live in the greatest country on earth and kids don't even have school supplies. But don't get me started. But but and then, you know, tens of thousands of teddy bears we've given to local police departments for their officers to keep in vehicles. So they encounter a child in a traumatic situation. They can comfort the child. Here's the message to those of you that have blood dripping from your teeth, that want success, that want the Lamborghini or the Ferrari or whatever it is that's driving you. What I'm going to tell you is you may say to yourself, yeah, that sounds great. And I'll give when I have money to give. I'm going to tell you, do it right freaking now. Find a cause you're interested in. I don't care if it's children like me, the elderly, the environment, animals, whatever it is. And do something you're passionate about and do something a little bit on a regular basis to give back. Why? For a couple of reasons. Number one, we've been taught to achieve to be happy. When you give back, you are happily achieving. Okay. I know it sounds like a play on words, but it's important play on words. And, and, you know, I was successful, but I was unfulfilled. Tony Robbins calls it the science of achievement because achievement really is a science. You listen to these guys to learn about short-term rentals. It's a science. There's no secret sauce. You get the blueprint. You just go do it. Same with multifamily. You come see me if you want to learn how to buy apartment buildings. It, it, there's no secret sauce. I'll tell you what to do. You just got to go do it. But fulfillment is an art. And that's why you've got to find something you're passionate about and give back there. Now, why? Because you're going to be successful faster. You, now, you don't do it for that reason, but I'm telling you, that's the byproduct. Whatever you give, I don't care if you believe in God or not, whatever you give, you get back a hundredfold, okay? So it, don't tell me you don't have money. Go give of your time if you don't have money, and I promise you, you'll reach your success faster, and you'll be doing it happier. Sorry, I know it's a long answer, no, but- I love, It's okay. vitally important, and not a lot of, it's the stuff that like people give lip service to, and mm. I was guilty of that for a long time until a mentor of mine- kind of called me out on something similar. So now I do a monthly thing with a, a charity that I'm passionate about that nice. saves kids from sex slavery. And that nice. the emails I get from them and the, the voicemails are incredible. So yeah. 100% yeah. agree with that. I want to shift gears a little bit because it's pretty relevant to what one of my students is going through. And I guarantee a lot of people that you've worked with go through the same thing. And I got this from Bob Proctor, rest his soul, another amazing human being. Did um, he die? He talked about your paradigm. He did. He passed away a few weeks ago. Holy shit. Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh God. Yeah. What a, what a loss. I did not know yeah. that. Wow. Yeah. Sorry Amazing to hear that, man. man. Wow. Wow. Um, but he talked a lot about like the terror barrier, right? And so in this case, you know what? what I'm sorry. With, I didn't hear, he calls I, I didn't it, hear he that. calls it the terror barrier. So like terror when you're, barrier, okay. when you're getting that goal into your subconscious and then it starts to manifest, mm -hmm. you freak out a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. So in this case, I'm working with a student. His goal was to leave his job, build up a short-term rental portfolio and then leave his job. His portfolio is growing very quickly right now. And then nice. he got laid off from his job last week. And he calls mm -hmm. me up freaking out and he's out job hunting again. And I'm like, mm -hmm. let's take a step back here and, and look at how all this stuff is processing, right? You're doing the, all the strategies, you're doing the mindset. Mm -hmm. The universe in its funny way gave you what you asked for to go out and mm -hmm. be on your own. But the first thing that happens is we retract, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's that new identity that we haven't stepped into yet. And he calls it that terror barrier. And I was thinking of the video you did, God, it was probably a year or two ago when you went skydiving, right? And that mm -hmm. terror feeling. And <laughs> he got to witness me do that on a zip line a few years ago where I was terrified, right. terrified to do this thing. But when you come out on the other side, it shapes you. It just changes you as a human. And that's how you constantly level up. So when you're setting those big goals, when those opportunity comes up, that that old limiting belief kicks in and throws everything in the kitchen sink at you to kind of pull you back into your comfort zone. So yeah. I'd love to hear your take on how. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to say that. Ex that. Yeah, you, I'm, you, that example you just gave, I'm not sure is the greatest example for that terror berry. Here's why. You know, if someone calls me and says, I'm going to quit my job and do this full time, I always say no, and unless they have a, a cushion, uh, a, a nest egg, or some other revenue. And here's why because obviously, as you know, 
fear is paralyzing. And if you have a fear of, of, of making enough money to survive, you're going to be paralyzed, not going to do anything. So that's, that's my answer to that. Now he got thrown into it. Now, if he's got enough income to keep him going and, and, and to mitigate that, that fear of losing everything, then absolutely he should go forward with it. Full but context year and a half in reserve. He's got a year and a half worth of money. Then by God, you know, there, there, there's, you can't even find people to work right now. Hell, you can make 18 bucks an hour working at retail stores right now. So he's not having any trouble getting another job. If he's got a year and a half, go, if you're listening, go kick ass and go make this happen in the short-term rental business and you'll never look back. But if not, then don't quit your job for God's sakes, because you don't want that fear. And you can do this, your business, my multifamily business on the side. I've got students that, you know, scores of them that have retired from very high paying jobs, very high paying jobs you know, because their revenue has exceeded, you know, in two or three years, they've retired. I just interviewed one today um, that just retired in September. So, so the point is you can absolutely do this on the side with a family, with a high, you know, with a W2 job, but, um, but again, don't, don't quit otherwise. Now <laughs> that's skydiving. I gotta, I gotta tell you a funny story. So yeah, that, that was my greatest fear. Heights was absolutely my greatest fear without question. I, I you know, looking over the edge of a balcony. Oh, hell no. And and so on the way to this, my, my, I told my son, yeah, I'll do it. And my, my boy just like little bastard actually booked it and told me I, he had, I had to go now. And I like, I was, so he held me, he held my feet to the fire. Otherwise I would have never done it. But anyway, um, on the way up there, I'm Googling skydiving. And I found out that you are 17 times or no, 27 times more likely to die on the way to the skydiving than in the plane itself. And so, you know, I'm strapped to this guy right up my rear end, you know, we're in the plane and the whole time he's pushing me forward towards the door, I'm going 27, 20, I might've been 17. I don't remember, but I'm, I'm saying that in my head and, and screaming the whole way down. Anyway, funny story. Yeah. I'll never freaking do it again, but it's off the list. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So for, I guess for context, for somebody that's going through that situation, it doesn't have to be quitting a job, but when you're going to do that first deal and you're freaking out. Peer group, are, peer yes. group, focus, goals, get that, keep that burning desire in the front of your mind. Recognize that, that we fail our way to success. Did, did I talk about Sarah Blakely yet? Did I mention that? Fear no, failure. She's okay. amazing. So, 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 oh, I love she's, Sarah Blakely. Yeah, yeah. That's a great Yeah. Story. So, so, so don't fear failure, fear freaking regret. Like that Bronnie Ware example the, about the biggest regrets when people die. Sarah Blakely, I met her at a, a mastermind. And, and she used to, she told me that her dad used to ask her and her brother, what have you failed at this week? Now, if you don't know who Sarah Blakely is, she started a company with $5,000 called Spanx. It's the women's undergarments to make them look thin, you know, and, 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 and man. she killed it. She also huh? sells to men now. Oh, does she? Yeah, of course yeah. I need it right now. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, so, so, but she's a beautiful human being. She's just so cool, 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 cool lady. But anyway, yeah. um, but, but what a great question to ask your kids to not fear failure, right? So again, guys, the, the only failure is if you give up or you don't get the lesson, period. Again, yeah. I told you about my failures, my seminars, uh, but but push through, get around people that are thriving, that, that will empower you and, and, and kick you in the butt and motivate you. And, and when you share your successes, they'll share in the wins with you. Like in, like I say, my warrior group, and I'm sure in your group, you know, somebody posts something, anything that's positive, they're in there to push you and propel you and keep you going. So peer groups, critical focus is important. Focus on what you want. Keep your eyes focused on the goal, not what you don't want. And, uh, and then just massive freaking action. Ma action mitigates fear. You got to take action and incorporate gratitude. You cannot be fearful and grateful at the same time. You can't be angry and grateful at the same time. There's no greater emotion that we have available to us than gratitude. Mm -hmm. Every morning I will sit in this recliner behind this green screen here. You can see my vision boards there on the floor. I will sit there and I'll do gratitude for the things that I have in my life. My freaking supermodel, beautiful wife, my kids, my foundation, my coaching students, but then I'll do gratitude for the things that I want as if I already have them. And I, I know I'm going to lose some of you analytical ones on this. I will sometimes get emotional being grateful for things I don't even have yet. And if you poo poo this, this is how I had 50 million to lose and how I got back to the success that I have today because this stuff freaking works, guys. So that's how you manifest it. It's all in Think and Grow Rich, too, which you referred to. Yes, really. it is. See yeah, it like oh, this this is it. not new stuff. This is not new stuff. Yeah. Rod, what are you excited about for this next like 12 to 18 months? What's what's 
Well, I'm super I'm excited about my students. Yeah, you know, this is not self-serving, but I got to tell you, I, it's my, I feel it's one of my greatest achievements. My students are pushing, you know, 55,000 units owned. I've been teaching for four years. I, you know, I, I love teaching. You can see on the wall behind me some of the hundreds of thank you cards from students. You can't the whole wall back here is covered with them. You know, whose lives have been impacted. Like I say, I've got my, I've got my two day boot camp coming up March 12th and 13th. Come for 97 bucks if you can make it. If you, if you use the code Rod Friend and text rod to 72345. And I promise you, listen, if you don't freaking love the event, I don't mean like it. I mean, love it. DM me on any social channel. I'll give you your money back. No, it's never happened, but I'm sure there'll be a first time. I've never had a complaint. Thousands of people. That's not, a, that's a lie. They complain the breaks are too short because I do 15 minute breaks every few hours. And I promise you they're harder on me because I got to eat and pee and everything else in 15 minutes. But, but I'm trying to pack in so much stuff because my live, you know, when I go live, it's three days, but I've packed that all into two days. But I'm, I'm, I'm excited about that. I'm excited about traveling again with my beautiful wife. I'm, you know, excited about the success of my students, like I said. Um, and, and, um, you know, life is amazing guys. I, you know, it, it just is. I love it. I love it. Well, I want to be respectful of your time. Um, yeah, my trainer's before... here. I see his truck, his Jeep just pulled in. <laughs> He's sitting out love there. It. So yeah. Yeah. So the, before we get into the last question first, I just want to say thank you again and just acknowledge you for just the awesome human being that you are. Like, Oh, thanks, brother. Thank I know you. for the listeners and those watching on YouTube and Facebook, like this is somebody that, again, I've looked up to for a long time, not because of his success, but he's just authentic. There's a lot of people that are like, you just, the BS meter is at an all time high for all of us. Rod's just one of those guys that's authentic. He cares. He's done it. He's sharing his wisdom. And he's willing to give his time. So thank you again so much. Definitely make sure you check out the boot camp if you guys are even remotely interested in apartments. Like he's the guy to go to for that. And nice. so the last question we like to ask all of our guests, typically it's related to short-term rentals, but I'll caveat and just say to real estate, what would be your number one secret to success with real estate? Education by far. Okay. Here's why. It doesn't matter what, what asset class you're going to get into, what model you're going to use, whether it's long-term rental, short-term rental, Here's why. Because competence is the first thing you must have. Why? Because that equates to confidence, okay? Which then equates to your ability to influence people. And, 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 you, know, and you have to love it. If, and you can learn to love anything by associating pleasure with it. And if, and if you can't learn to love short-term rentals, then for God's sakes, go do something else because life is too short. Because, but if you love it, you're going to be passionate about it and that passion will come through and you'll be able to influence people to invest with you, to work with you and so on and so forth. So competence to confidence, to passion, to, to, to massive success. Boom. Mm. Mic drop moment. Rock yeah, thank you so much good. for being My with pleasure, us. Today, guys. Man. Thank great you, great to see you. you guys. If I can help with anything, don't hesitate and, uh, and keep doing what you're doing. I can tell you doing good things and thank you for all the kind words you made my day. Take care guys. See you. All right. Take care. Everybody. See ya. Hey, STR Nation, if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and leave us a review. And in the comments, let us know what topics you want us to cover on upcoming episodes, and we'll make sure to get that in the books for you. And if you really want to learn how to launch, automate, and scale your short-term rental business, if you want to go deeper, then check out our free masterclass at strsecrets.com.